Texas. Well, for more, <laughs> we're joined in studio by a member of the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee, Senator Tommy Tuberville. Welcome, Senator. Better known as Coach, right? Yeah, he's a real coach. <laughs> he's, a real coach. <laughs> he's a real coach. <laughs> yeah, not make, an assistant volunteer coach. I had to make sure we had to make sure we get his name right so we don't get laps around the building as a penalty. <laughs> Push up, laugh, Absolutely. all of it. <laughs> so, give us your take on the retaliatory strikes by Israel against Iran, and is it correct that the Biden administration should keep saying to Israel, "Go slow." Be gentle, be proportionate. What's your view? They've been riding the fence ever since this started. Uh, they've created two wars, by the way. We've got another one over in Eastern Europe. But uh, this one, we need to allow Israel to survive. They need to be able to fight and win this war. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden has, has allowed Iran to benefit from the no sanctions, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars wealth, and President Trump had them almost broke. And so at the end of the day, the Biden administration has stretched this out. They've gotten a lot of people killed. Let mm -hmm. them do what they need to do to survive in the Middle East. It is a dangerous place, and Iran is the number one culprit of going after Israel. Well, how do you, how, well, what do you expect uh, Iran's response, response will be, and then what Israel's response will be? Because it seems like we're not headed toward a path toward at least interim peace. Well. Uh, we probably can call our Pentagon or CIA because they're divvying out all the information that Israel's doing, so they probably know right. what Iran's doing. It really makes me sick to see our three-letter three, three letter agencies get involved in all this. You know, our government's way too big. Mm -hmm. Everything leaks out, mm -hmm. uh, and we know that our, uh, Israel had pretty much changed you know, their, their game plan of going in and going after Iran. Now, it looks like what they did is they went in with American-made planes, which is F-35s, and which uh, really hadn't been tested before, but they were mm -hmm. tested in battle here against the S 300s and 400s that Russia make. It's their air to ground missile system. Yes. And it looks like, you know, we won out and that our F 35s really did well. So it looks like they went in and did a cleanup area on the ground trying to make sure that, hey, the next time we come in, which there will be a next time, uh, that we don't have to worry about those systems. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there was a few people killed. We hate anybody to lose their life, but we need to stop this war. But we can't stop it when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris rides a fence and doesn't take it really aside. Uh, they're pretty much against Israel, almost everything they do, but they're allowing them to do what they need to be doing. Well, the thing is, is that uh, if I hear you correctly, we should focus on global warming. And by, by that, I mean not climate change in terms of the heat, <laughs> the temperature, in terms of all these wars going on around the world. Because at a recent BRIC summit, uh, Vladimir Putin actually is actually signaling that we might be going toward a World War III. Yeah, and who's caused BRICS? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. They have basically run Russia and China together, along with the other countries uh, across the world, because we, we tend to be the security of everybody. We think that we're about the boss of everybody mm -hmm. when we can't even run our own country. Uh, we have gone down so much in the last three and a half, four years with mm -hmm. this administration. It's embarrassing. I mean, we have no education left in this, this country. 27th in the world in education. Shocking. It, you know, kids think they're cats and dogs. Our mental health is going crazy. We've got, we're, our border is wide open. President Trump is going to have to fix this. We need to put our country in rehab for a, for a little while to get a new president with leadership that knows what they're doing to get our country going again. Folks, we're in bad trouble. Uh, I tell people back in Alabama, uh, our country is in dire need of leadership in Washington, D.C. We need to cut the bureaucracy out. We need to clean it up, mm -hmm. but we are overrun by people that don't want to work. You know, half the people in Washington, D.C. don't go to the office to work. I mean, you, you can't, you, yeah, you can't. They're on the gravy train, sir. Yeah. They're on the gravy yeah. train. They're taking a check. Right. Uh, uh, you know, they come to the office maybe once or twice a month to pick Shocking. up their check. I mean, it's, we're, 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 we're going down the, the wrong path here. And, it, and we got to get our country back in the straight and narrow. But again, we, uh, it's unfortunately we're involved in this Middle East and the Ukrainian war where we spent $200 billion and we've gotten all these people killed over there. We've got to get out of these wars and get back to our country. And you, you used a very interesting phrase a moment ago. You said the Biden administration keeps stretching these wars out, stretching mm -hmm. them out by tamping down our allies' response to attacks in Ukraine or, in, in this case, particularly in Israel. If you let Israel go in and really attack Iran, 
this war could be shorter. You Is know, that they, correct? They were attacked over a year ago. Yes. Uh, and 1,500 people. I Horrible. Saw, I saw the videos. You don't want to see them. No. You do not want to see the brutality of what happened with the mosque coming over, you know, from Gaza and into that uh, music festival. It, it, it's horrific. But I'm not sure whose side Biden and and uh, Harris are on. I really Whoa. They, again, they play the fence mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, we're, our military is not strong. Uh, you know, we're, I had two buddies just come back from fighting for a year overseas. And the first thing they had to do is go through a week of training of DEI. Oh, uh, no. Military. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, a, you know, our, our military is in a tailspin. Uh, everything that we've done in this country that our fathers and great grandfathers and mothers built in this country, it's in the last three and a half years, it's been knocked to its knees. And we've got to start building our country back to make it stronger because right now we are, we're, uh, uh, we're not doing very well on anything that we do. For those very reasons, you were the first senator to come out and endorse Donald Trump for president. With the election just nine days away, how crucial is the decision in terms of leadership going forward with this conflict in our economy, the southern border, so many issues? Well, I'm not a politician. In the last three and a half years, I've gone to Washington, D.C. almost every day and watched the non-leadership of this group. Mm -hmm. uh, they play the fence. Uh, everything is uh, against the American people, and it's for people out of this country. You talked earlier about climate change. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. When you go up and down these streets out here in New York, and right. trash everywhere, people laying everywhere, we don't take care of ourselves. But you go to Asia, and you go to some of those cities, the streets are clean, there, there's discipline. Uh, we've lost all sense of reality here in our country because we don't put our finger on the things that count most. Morality, you know, people that, you know, uh, God back in our country, get our education going again and get some discipline and respect back with our kids. We've seen the Harris campaign struggle particularly to attract support among men and even Gen Z men. Would you comment on that? <laughs> well, they feel like they've got to get a lot of these young men uh, involved in their campaign for them to have a chance to win. Uh, I, I think that what they're getting ready to find out is they're not buying into that, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, these two that are running for president and vice president, probably the weakest group in my lifetime to ever have an opportunity to be in the White House. Folks, we need lead, we gotta have leadership in this country. We, we don't need people to get along with people. We need somebody to say, this way we're gonna do yeah. it. This is the American people. We have a constitution, we have laws. We gotta go by those, and we gotta get back to a sense of reality of, of what this country was built on. Right now, uh, uh, again, uh, in, you know, we, we, we've got a part of this country that, that thinks that men can have babies. We got right. part of this country that believe that men should play in women's sports. Tampons this in is, the bathroom. Yes. Yeah, right. tampons. In, <laughs> this is so I mean, ridiculous. And this guy's going to got a chance to be vice president of the United States. Amazing. I mean, so, so it is true. We do have to claim the ch claim, uh, change the climate in so many different ways in terms of these social issues, as well as put money green back into people's pockets. Yeah, exactly. Get people back to work. Quit writing checks to people all across the country educate our kids, get away from all this social justice agenda. Yes. Our universities are, are, have become woke. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so expensive to go to them now to get a- uh, And they don't it, learn anything. And you get a degree and right. then you can't get a job at Walmart. Right. I mean, I mean right. come on. And this again, it, the number one thing for us right now, and I've watched it for three and a half years, is that border is an absolute disaster. Mm -hmm. And if Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz get elected, oh. four more years of this, this will not be the United States of America ever again because we will not be able to get ourselves out of the problems. I, President Trump has got his hands full when he gets elected. That I mean, is a serious this is warning. Be really hard. That's true. And to the, to your point, we have to make sure that we get him a Congress to work with him over the four years. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Tommy Tuberville, thank you so much for thank joining you. With and me. I hope you'll come back for a whole hour next time. It'll be fun. <laughs> Terrific. After we win this in the House and the Senate and the White House, let's go back to work and build our country back. That's right. Absolutely.